Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Homesteading Channel. If today is the first time you are visiting with us, we want to extend to you a very warm welcome and invite you to watch any of our over 550 videos that we have arranged for your convenience in playlists as we are confident you are going to find something both interesting and entertaining to watch. If you have been here before, welcome back. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. Well friends, we have a very fun project for you today that's both useful and what else we call it. Uh, oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Enhancing utility. And for today's project we're going to use uh, pocket screws as the sole method of uh, connecting the pieces of wood. And projects like that, in general, do lend themselves to pocket screws because they have areas that are never going to be visible. But also you can use other methods and I'm going to talk to you about them in a while. But what are we building today? Uh, one of our sons is a gamer. Is that the right term? Yep. So he wanted a... Only one of them? Yeah. This one. <laughs> he wanted something for like, his apartment room that he can put his TV on and his console on and also have a little bit of storage space for miscellaneous things, right? Right. So today we're going to build a gaming entertainment system that you can build easily in an afternoon, a few hours, right? Yeah. For under $50 materials. So stick around and we're going to show you exactly how we did it. So today we're going to build this entertainment system. And frankly, the same methods can be used to make a small bookcase or a small cabinet or any other type of uh, furniture that you want for your house. We use it uh, buying uh, uh, lumber from the store. The legs are uh, dimensional lumber which is very inexpensive and the top and the selves are uh, manufactured lumber, I don't know how to call it, but there are a lot of small pieces of lumber put together. It has a very nice look to it, right? Mm -hmm. And also it's very dimensionally stable. It will not change, it will not uh, warp through uh, time. It has a very nice little skirt in the front and on the sides mm -hmm. and provides a lot of material. In our case, uh, we wanted a short shelf on the top for the console, consoles, mm -hmm. but of course you can um, space them any way you want. Right. One of the advantages of um, do-it-yourself furniture. Custom builds means you get what you want exactly. and what you need. Now, we use uh, pocket screws, but you could make it very rustic by using uh, visible dowels here mm -hmm. to make the connections, right? It will take a little longer. So this build, would you say three, four hours? Somewhere in that yeah. range. Yeah. yeah. It, it didn't take uh, long. So, uh, pocket screws, especially if this is your first time, are a very fast, efficient, and uh, forgiving method to, to connect uh, wood pieces, wouldn't you say? Yeah. In any case, uh, the only thing we're going to show you in the end that you don't see right now is uh, the piece finish. You can stain it, you can paint it, or you can just pull it and have this natural look. Mm -hmm. uh, this wood will yellow with time, even if you poly it, right? It will turn mm -hmm. a little yellower. Most white wood does that. So if that's not the look you want, you need to do something different. Yeah, you could even use that wax that we found recently. Yeah. That orange wax that gives it a nice protected finish but doesn't change the color of the wood. All right, so stick around and we're going to show you every step of how to make this beautiful piece of furniture for under $50 in four hours. Can you say that five times first? Nope. We start by cutting our big pieces. And we determined that uh, we had bought eight foot boards, right? Mm -hmm. And we are going to have the, the top of the entertainment center 60 50. or 50 mm -hmm. uh, wide, and each of the south will be 46? 40. Yeah, 46. 46. So we are cutting those dimensions right now, and as we usually do, we're using the uh, existing cut that we just made off camera to cut the other piece. Don't be that close to the plate. So here we are marking the final piece. 
that's going to be cut for our third shelf on the entertainment center. Now this, of course, you can have any dimension you want. We chose, uh, how wide is this, 12? This is 12. Yeah, so we chose 12, and this is not dimensional lumber. So it is a, a true 12, I believe, or did I lie? Should we check it? I think it's a true 12. I think it is because we used a square to mark the first line and it was a 12 inch piece of metal. So we need to cut right on the line, side, right or left? So by choosing our material a certain way, we minimize the amount of cuts we have to do, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't have to rip and, and cross cut. Right now we're cross cutting everything. No, right, no and, ripping. and the other part I think you did was to uh, minimize the amount of cuts by using the dimensions of your lumber. So you, you wanted a little bit of an overhang on your top shelf and you adjusted for that in terms of the board. So that made the boards minimally cut. All right, so we're going to be right back. So some time ago, if you remember, we make this uh, a uh, stop jig that has become very very useful actually we've used it several times right mm -hmm. and uh, our feet are going to be three uh, our feet will be three feet <laughs> yes so we're going to use the stop we need four pieces no eight pieces eight pieces for the total four, mm -hmm. for the four feet so this will allow us to make a quick work of the cutting process right right so we're going to get cutting and we'll be right back with you i'll just stay here while you're cutting your first ones Do we have slow motion on that thing? And here's the importance of dry fitting. As we were dry fitting during our very first dry fit, we discovered we had a design flaw, right? Well, a miscalculation. A miscalculation or a non-calculation. <laughs> so we said we're not going to have any ripping cuts, and um, as you can see our setup, that is not quite true. Where I did a, a ripping cut, right? Right. Because we actually need the, the shelves inside to be a little uh, less wide mm -hmm. than the, the top. Uh, it's a minor thing, but that shows why you need to be doing dry fits, right? Right. So we're going to get right with it. All right. So it has to stay. Yeah, it has to jets. stay there. So can I do it like this? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can even use your hand if you want to make so different. As long as you don't cross this line here. Okay. visible or not but I want to point out two things 
first of all, we're using the riving knife to avoid kickback. Mm -hmm. And the other part, I'm well in the side, right? Yeah. If there was for the, the saw to, to kick a piece back, that would be this piece, right? Mm -hmm. The blade would get caught. And, and if I'm here, flying back that way. you can see that it's an unpleasant situation, right? Yes. This piece, it's bigger. I have control over it. I have my hands in this, right? Mm -hmm. It is not as likely, but again, my hands were away from the blade. So good positioning to avoid kickback is very important. That's okay. all I wanted to say. That is my public service announcement. That's it? That's my public service All right, service never wait for the camera person to start well, filming. Well, it is something that doesn't feel right, so... Well, you probably didn't get it in the hole. I got it fine in the hole. You I didn't get it in the hole. Otherwise, it would feel right. I'm going to be spunky. Will that feel right? <laughs> you know we're filming right now, right? Yes, I'm aware. Okay. Otherwise, Just you saying. wouldn't be obnoxious. I'm obnoxious all the time. They must know that by now. This track is giving us trouble. Everybody's doing the clock. Yeah, the, the old ones tend to. That's why another reason I like the other ones, you know, the quick release. Oh yeah, they're nice. Okay. So, what are we doing now? We are pocket holding. Pocket holding. But for what purpose? For connecting pieces of wood together. Really? Who's the smart Alec now? <laughs> Just Alec, not smart. All right. All right. So, so we're uh, uh, working on the legs. We're going to use pocket holes because this is not going to be visible at all. Mm -hmm. Number one, right? And number two makes a very good connection. Yes. And number three, that's what we decided. Right. So what we're doing right now is each leg has actually two pieces to the board, but we are having four of those boards that are going to have two pocket holes in them and then the other four boards are only going to have one and they will be assembled and then that is how they will be attached to the top piece. So let's go ahead with the next one. And, the, and as we usually do we've decided which which pieces are which side is going to be outside versus inside because uh, of the wood grain that we like. And because Mm -hmm. And because these boards are so uh, exact there, we have to line it up pretty closely. Forward is good. Yeah, it likes forward. In general, yeah. We're low on battery. Yeah. We're trying to get every ounce of battery out of it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to make our legs by putting two boards together thusly, right? Well, I can't see what thusly looks like. Oh, there we go. There we go. And of course, as you can see, here it looks fine, but we cannot have another pocket hole. Let's do it the wrong way so we can fold them. So if you try to do two pocket holes on each board, it's gonna cover up one of your pocket holes. Right. And that's not working for you. So on the first four pieces, because we need eight total, we put two pocket holes, and on the last four pieces, we're going to put one in the middle. Yes. So we're going to do that, and we'll be right back. show you the assembly of one uh, leg. And remember, one of the legs has uh, two pocket holes in it, and the other has one. And that is important for your orientation, you know? All right, so you're going to put uh, glue on one piece. And this is very similar to the column legs that we built uh, for my table recently. Uh, we're just building like basically half of that column. But again, your orientation is very important to make sure they're going to fit on your table correctly. Or in this case, the console. And we're using, of course, the best tool for uh, glue. glue. Yeah. With your finger. Yeah. And here is, you need to make sure your alignment is, is as good as you want it to be, I guess, right? As good as you can make it until you're happy. Don't worry. Be happy. And we're using clamps. You know, we only have to do four legs, so it doesn't uh, worth making a jig. Here is your edge, top to My bottom, edge. Edge. top to bottom. Okay. You can only sand a little bit of the Okay, if you're happy with that. Okay. What about the ledge part? Looks good. Okay. And of course the tool we cannot do without, which is our 
Just remember that you want to be this way. Yep. And what Alpida was talking about there was uh, if you want to avoid blowouts, the orientation of your uh, staple gun is very important. And it's actually called a brad nailer, not a staple gun, but you know what I mean. Don't go too much in. Don't worry about it. Okay. And another leg is done. So Mrs. Wizard is doing a little bit of finish sanding before we assemble uh, because one of these shelves for sure is not going to be reachable with that sander because it's only going to have a six inch depth uh, for the opening. So before assembly we're just doing a little bit of this to make it smoother and ready to finish. And she's using a 150 grit sandpaper to smooth this out. Okay, so right now our setup is that we have whoo, the, the console top and then one of the shelves uh, all, all aligned so that all of our legs are going to align here and here and we've got a two inch overhang on either side. We're using those packet holes that we drilled earlier to attach the leg to the top. And we did a test board, um, test pieces, so that we could confirm which correct size we are using. And we are using one and a quarter inch Craig screws. Um, and that's what they... And again, that always depends on the... The width of your boards. Yeah, you're and so for us, we have a three quarter inch width on our legs and a five eighths inch on our top. And again, we just confirmed that that will go through and hold it securely, but it will not go through the actual top and mess that up. And again, our alignment for this project was pretty important. Mm -hmm. There we go. And if you recall, we drilled two uh, Craig holes on one of the boards and a single on the other. And so all of our two screw hole boards are on the outside. And then the single ones are the ones that are on, on uh, the facing boards. And we're assembling it upside down now. Yes, this is upside down. Okay. And again, we used okay. uh, our very first shelf board to help align the legs to ensure that they are aligned so right to leg. left and front to back. Last leg. And again, you can see here the alignment, the boards with the two screws are all on the outside where the ends of the the console and then the single ones are on the front and the back. Why this is not it's supposed to be like this? It's leaning for some reason. So we're assembling this upside down as you can probably see. And uh, you can also use dados which also use pocket screws for fast assembly. And also with the pocket screws we can take it apart if we needed to. Right? Right. Not that that is a very big piece of furniture. But we use storyboards for the distance so we don't have to measure right mm -hmm. so we're not going to just gonna subject you to us putting screws into boards but you know we want to let you know how right. we're doing it so our first shelf was that six and a half inch measurement with the first storyboard and the idea is that this is a, a tv entertainment center right mm -hmm. and the first one is designed to put uh, consoles like ps4 right. so this xbox small. this kind of mm -hmm. thing doesn't need to be very big the other two, our uh, idea is that we're going to have what? Uh, a cubes. Mm -hmm. or, or a shelf for books or right. something like that. Or even down the road put a, uh, doors or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So that is our pr uh, preference. Again, this is the neat thing. If you have something specific you want to do, you can decide exactly the space and how it's going to look for you, right? Right. 
So we're going to put the other two uh, pieces. One of the things I wanted to show you is that by doing this this way, this helps align the legs very nicely, right? Mm -hmm. And will prevent the future of the legs from twisting. Yes. And as you can see, the, the pocket holes will never be visible because this is the underside of right. the thing. So mm -hmm. this is a perfect project for pocket holes, I think. Yeah. All right, so we're going to assemble the other two and we'll be right back. So we want to show you how we use the storyboard. We put the storyboard in one corner first and then we use a clamp to hold the piece in the correct height. Then we're going to remove the storyboard and put it on the opposing corner. And then we're going to attach it and that is true that we have a uh, a level a straight area without having to measure or mm -hmm. do anything else. And as you can see we've already got the first two shelves installed in this same manner and so we'll finish this up and then show you how it looks so when we're we finished. To add a little of an aesthetic element and when we reap the boards we had some extra material and, and, and here it is and we're creating a little bit what it's called a skirt mm -hmm. and here we're using some uh, clamping power just to keep it very tight on our top. Mm -hmm. But to attach it on the corners here, you used... Pocket screws, and you can probably come and saw all the, the, the did, detail. The diddly-doos there. So that's the end one, and then... So this whole project is pocket screws, right? Mm -hmm. So the next step will be uh, Sanding or, or finishing or what? Yeah. Just finish, it, finish work. This wizard needs to do a little bit of extra sanding um, on legs and a couple of other pieces and then it will be stained. And we decided to put uh, the skirts on the front and the sides but we didn't put anything in the back. Right. And of course you could leave it like this now, just put some poly on it to protect it, right? You could paint it or our uh, preferred mm -hmm. method which is to stain it. Right. So here we are with getting started on the staining process. And this is that same dark espresso type stain that we, we like a lot. And that's the other advantage of this wood, it takes the stain very nicely. Mm -hmm. It is usually very well, very well dried, so for furniture it's a good choice. Sometimes the machine on lumber can be a little wet. Or a lot wet, depending on <laughs> when you get it. We've pulled some pieces out of the lumber piles at the box stores that have been quite wet with. And this construction, uh, I don't know if it was obvious when we were filming it, but it helps align itself. Does that make sense? To it's, us, it's it does. very forgiving, huh? <laughs> so to me, it does because I watched it happen. Yeah, but as I said, I don't know if it came through the yeah. the video, but it is an, a very good way to build it because it allows you the flexibility. You don't have to have everything perfect, but it aligns itself. Mm -hmm. And even though one of the leg pieces was a little bit uh, curved, once you put those pocket screws in, everything did align up and made it all square. Now we did take time to check them. We didn't buy the curviest boards ever, right? Right, so you definitely want to try to keep your pieces straight, but even so, if you have a little bit of a curve in it, this is going to line it up. Beautiful. Yeah, so I'm gonna back up a little bit. I just wanted to show you how that grain comes out. And for comparison, we have seen similar things on Etsy and Pinterest for upwards of $200, $200, $300, right? Yeah. And the material costs us uh, fifty dollars, and again, three four hours of building. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a very worthwhile project to do for yourself. Yeah. Well, and again, it's very custom for the space and for the needs of the person. So that's one of the things that makes all the difference. And of course, the dimensions can be made to fit your space. Yes. All right, folks. We're going to show you the the final project in a little bit. Stick around. So let's talk a little bit about construction. We already said we use a, a Greg jig to put the piece together. But again, uh, in very common practice in our channel, we use story sticks. And Alpita, what are story sticks? 
Uh, the story sticks help us with our spacing between our shelves. And in our case, we have three different um, heights between our shelves. The top one is six and a half inches, and we just wrote it there just to make mm -hmm. sure we didn't make a mistake. Because story sticks are usually uh, scrap, right? Yeah, so we just cut a piece of scrap to the dimension that we wanted, and then we were able to use that to align each of the four uh, corners of the shelf to make sure that it was as exactly the same height. And we have a lot of scrap around, so... So it worked out, yeah. But I mean, so we want to mark it to make sure we didn't grab something that's similar right. in size, but right. the wrong size. This makes the assembly, I'm going to let Alpida say more, but it makes the assembly fairly straightforward without measuring, right? It did, and then of course because you have that as a little bit of a support, then the shelf rested on that. You didn't have to worry about it moving up or down. Uh, the only thing that we found was it, it tended to make the story stick in there pretty tight, and so you had to work on it a little bit to get it to move to the next spot. But That's the byproduct of the, the pocket screws because they, they move tighter. They, mm -hmm. the, the way that you they brought you the legs in. And yeah. mm -hmm. So, but it was not an impossible thing. It was not a big deal or a problem at all. No, no, not a problem. Just to let you know, it will be very snug. But it worked very well for each of the three shelves. So we had this one, our first one. We had a 12 inch for the next shelf. Which um, double, that was our original test piece for our yeah. <laughs> uh, Craig screws. And then the last was the longest one. Mm -hmm, at 14. And we didn't write because it's unique we, I enough. I think we looking. did. We did? I don't see it, but that's why, you know. Yeah. But anyway, so we used that in each of the four corners for each of the shelves on uh, the measurements we were looking for. And as you can see, it made the spacing very nice, very even. And no measuring. That's the important right. thing, right? Right. Usually measuring will lead to some error. Mm-hmm. And so even if we had cut this slightly off of our measurement, then it's still going to be the same all the right. way around because we're using the same piece as our... Which in general is, is better. In other words, consistency is better than accuracy, right? Right. So even if you're making an error, you're making the same consistent error all the way around. And in something like this, if you make an error, it would be an A. It would not be an right. error anyway. But it would look straight. You don't have to level it mm -hmm. except for level every, every moment, right? Right. It is a nice way to do it. And you won't end up with the Dr. Seuss shelf like we have. <laughs> well, but that, that reminded us, right? Right. It was in the old shelf. And I talked briefly about that. And I am in the habit, even though I know how to dial the Greg Zig, Greg Zig, Zig. Craig Jig. Uh -huh. I'm in the habit of uh, doing test runs, right? Uh -huh. Using the material we have. Yep. And maybe we'll do an episode showing you how to use a Craig Jig, right? Mm-hmm. But again, it's crap and it double. Uh, Several double purpose as our uh, story stick, so it didn't get lost. I mean, mm -hmm. it, didn't, it wasn't a waste, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, so we're going to show you now the rest of the story. All right, folks, and here we are with the finished piece, and it's stained beautifully. I think. What do you guys think? Yeah. It looks really, really nice. And look at this top. This is just stunning, uh, right? We'll come and get that top in just a moment. Just wanted just to give a, a full view of this. Again, you can leave it as it was, or you can uh, paint it. Stain is a very, very good option, however, I think. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, friends, and here we are. We have put the, the furniture in place. And as you can see, it easily accommodates a fairly large TV. And uh, we have two game consoles here and other miscellaneous things. Mm -hmm. Overall, this is exactly the design we had in mind when we started this project. Right. And it came out very nice, right? It did. It doesn't take a lot of space. It's fairly light. What are the, the characteristics of this? Yeah, it was really easy to move around. Not too heavy, but substantial enough to hold up what you need. Oh yeah, I mean it's unbelievably strong. You can probably <coughs> someone can sit on this in one. Mm -hmm. It will be a very high chair, but it won't. Right, but it, you can sit can on it. It can carry much more weight than we will ever put on it. Right. So this, this is our end product, and, and overall, as uh, you can see, we're pretty pleased with it. Mm -hmm. Looks good. We really enjoyed this project. It came up exactly as we envisioned it, I think, right? Yeah. And uh, we hope you enjoyed that project as well. If you did, we would appreciate the thumbs up. If you didn't, the other button works as well. Please share, like, subscribe if you have not done so. And let us know what else you might like to watch in our channel. From Dr. Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida, and the Urban Homestanding channel, stay safe, 
put your masks on, wash your hands, and we're going to see you soon with a midweek episode. Friends, farewell. <laughs>